When last we left off, everyone had encountered a few things in town. The main sake of this purpose to get into town and to figure out what exactly is going on within your own kingdom. The kingdom of Isle, which is the kingdom you belong to, and honestly, it's never been brought up, so I've never actually given you the name. But I'm giving you it now. The kingdom we of the Isle. The name. Oh, yeah, it might have been a while ago. Oh, yeah, a few sessions ago. Yeah, uh,. I had been dealing with a few things from another world. Therefore, you had decided to go and make sure that these things stopped happening. Mainly portals to another dimension and things popping out of them. The city capital itself had a few problems that were personal to you. So, after Zold and Cerulean got married... Hey! Might as well have a wedding ceremony. Uh, almost get kidnapped. Fun times. So, with the... <laughs> said honeymoon of two weeks, you invited the party to deal with the matters at hand. While you entered into town, there were a few things that hadn't occurred. One, people had been gone missing. Thankfully enough, you solved that. Two, uh, Zen has family problems, and you have more or less solved that, but you have really yet to deal with the mob, but who knows if that will conclude it or not. It's entirely up to you. Uh, three, Blue slash Ray, really Ray, has standing debt to the College of Magic she goes to. Uh, that has yet to be resolved, to be perfectly honest. For Morthos' bloodline slash heritage is an apparent key that might bring the end of the world. Dying might not be the best thing to do. <laughs> and Q kind of first blew up her... No, Zol technically blew up her father, but Q was fine with it. Became an immortal enemy against her own brother due to the pact she made with the Fae Queen of the Winter Court. Um, What else did she do technically that's illegal, but also legal on standing point? Uh, became the matriarch of her family. Her family is currently in Heist, a port city, about four days from this point in time. You still have, like, vacation days, so you can probably go there if you decide to. Time to go kill uh, <laughs> my brother, guys. Let's go. Yeah. So are we just going to massacre the entire Bishop family except for Q? Who knows? Oh, no. My little brothers are fine. Supposedly, they were when I last saw them. Your two brothers and your mom seem to be fine. Your mom might be drinking more than you had expected, but that's oh, commonplace. She drank, she drank a lot when I was growing up. Yes, but of like my antics. Probably more due to your father's antics. Former antics? Yeah, true. The that's true, true. Uh, Regardless of that, there are still some things that he had to deal with. Thankfully enough, he managed to save the king, save the kingdom. Blow up the apparent heir, allow the third son to take his place, as the second one didn't want to, and formed a small temporary contract with Charles, a celestial from your own patriarch. No, not patriarch, sorry. Uh, patronage. The time ran out, but he's a nice enough guy that he'd help you anyways. And you dealt with the matter at hand, dealing with a man known as Anderson, or Foster in this town. He apparently was waiting for someone here, and when they showed up, a dragonborn of high rapport and strength came about. <laughs> yes, English real bad. He managed to deal a good amount of damage against each of you, but mainly Zold, as it really, really hurt. Cerulean then embedded a what appeared to be a black death-like wand straight into his abdomen and blew most of his skin off. That didn't manage to kill him, so the rest of the team managed to berate through, and Zold, breaking his pistol, barreled through with the rest. With that in mind, you learned that he was a lich, some strange creature of undeath. So with that in mind and not wanting to deal with the situation as he was dangerous beforehand and not being able to die is even further still dangerous, Zold used his wish to make sure that the death at hand remained permanent. 
And so with that, a vision into an unknown location where a scepter and crown stood and the chair in the middle which stood itself. There were many cha jewels, chains, and the like upon it, but one stood out and one cracked and shattered. You then felt the body that's near you just completely go inert. With that in mind and that in question, that was the last thing you did. Zold felt something going and being drawn and written on his spine and skin. What that is might be brought up later. You still have tomorrow to deal with, and tomorrow means, like, two hours from now, uh, and a long rest, since it is close to midnight. To go and speak with the new king-to-be, as the father is still resting, to get rewarded. But right now, you made another bloody mess, killed the dragonborn, made sure he died, and that is where you had left off. We were heading back to my house. I was actually trying something, and I had to wait for this week to do it. Because Cerulean is suffering from the force change of the spell in her wand. That's true. When you get to go and try to heal her, the wand's changing attribute caused a sensation to backfire against her. It didn't seem to be a good thing. So when you tried to heal her, it did not take. So so I was going to try and have Peep heal her. Uh, you bring you, him out of your pocket? Yeah, and you said that you would think on that one how that would work. You bring Reap yeah. out of your pocket, and then he expands to a medium-sized creature's height and build. Not a large creature, which he technically is now. Bring him I'm out. I'm imagining Peep looking fucking tracked, but still like being a dripping glue mo uh, goo monster. <laughs> Good mental image. Uh, Morthos, with that in mind, you bring him out. What exactly do you tell him to do? Um... I don't really know of his intelligence, but I'm going to, I would say, explain it at a kid's level that Cerulean's hurt really bad and my healing magic won't fix it to see if he can. All right. Uh, with that in mind and trying to make sure that uh, your companions don't... Uh break apart on you he tell peep to go and try to help cerulean as best he can as most as he can i don't know why peep is currently a ninja i think he was technically still invisible yeah he he yeah. was i think we all are were were uh dragonborn negated that anyways uh he goes over towards cerulean and begins to basically hold her hand and his arm begins to melt completely off. Thankfully enough, he's able to form another one, but the hand that melted off, a good chunk of it, uh, formed and overlapped around her hand, and then it begins to ooze about her. The flesh of her flesh and his flesh begin to meld in Morthos. I want you to roll a d20 and add five to it. Ugh. The melding of skin and the strange goo sensation begin to overlap, churn, and move. With a byproduct of whatever this is, or whatever Cerulean did, you can tell that something is happening to Cerulean and Peep. Skew. Uh, Zold might not like that, the way I phrase it, but moving on. <laughs> uh, the big goo begins to absorb into the skin, and for whatever reason, it begins to singe, and it begins to almost turn the skin red. Cerulean begins to be drawn in pain, but doesn't whimper, doesn't cry, it's not her style. Uh, but then you see a strange miasmic heat being drawn out of her hand. Uh, whatever Peep did, 
a good amount of what appears to be miasmic shadow begins to be drawn out through her skin out of it and begins to form fog. It rises into the air and after a while it just simply becomes transparent and after a good 30 seconds it stops. Whatever happened now, you can tell Cerulean is still in pain. It still hurts, but less. It just didn't fully take. Maybe so... Peep still needs to try to fix this or deal with it, but right now, in the moment, not enough time. But it did help, even just a little. Okay. So, have him shrink back down and put him back in the pocket for now and let him rest. And I would probably explain to Cerulean that we'll have to try and get Peep to help again later. <sighs> All right. It's not exactly a pleasant healing, but if any luck, he gets better at it. Well, maybe me and Sun can help out on that <laughs> end as well. Fair enough. Uh, with that in mind, uh. Are you guys heading towards Q's house? That was the plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let uh, pull Zen back a little bit as we're walking. Kind of have her slow down a little bit. Are you guys going to walk there? I mean, you uh, can. Oh, um, but right. I think we're gonna Ray was... Uh, had we're going to have Ray us teleport us. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to get Ray to teleport us. That's right. <laughs> All right, I guess Ray will teleport us. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that in mind, you jump to your house. Oh, no. Oh, oops. <laughs> I forgot to clean this. There's, yeah, there's still some. Oh, there's still some torturing stuff around. I mean, you never got rid of it. That's not my job. I kind of pull Zen off the side once we get here, and uh, so which one of us is gonna tell Cerulean? I feel like you're super metagaming from the conversation we had last no, week, but it's no. fine. No, because Q would have was gonna what like Q's thinking about t was already thinking about talking to uh, Cerulean, and then she would have. Was like, oh shit! Sh they did this in secret, and Sin is really its best friend. So, I, because she was already gonna, I was already gonna have Q talk to Cerulean, and Q would have thought, tried to think of something to convince her to go with what her she wanted. Yeah, I still feel like it's. <laughs> Super the player's interaction, which is fine. We can work with this. <laughs> uh, I digress. I, sh I, I should mention that, like, you literally are having to, like, carry Zold or whatever back and help. Again, I'm at three strength right now. We teleported. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I was wondering. Cannot, I literally cannot stand right now. Yeah, your wife's got you. Don't worry. I'm right here. Yeah. Morthos I'm gotcha. Don't worry. probably going to have to carry both of you. <laughs> Thanks, Morthos. Morthos got it. <laughs> Alright, uh, with <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Q's question and Huntsman, with Zold, sorry, uh, I only do that a couple times, being held by his wife and being carried by Morthos, or vice versa, depends on how Zold feels, uh, Q speaks with Zen about who's going to tell Zen's best friend and confidant. Her Alfred to the Batman. If Zen was Batman, but she's clearly not. Uh, looking towards you, Q, she does immediately go pale. There's like no thought patterns whatsoever that are as clear as this. She's panicked. She is close to hyperventilating. If you guys yeah. weren't in a situation that you are, 
Uh, oh, so yeah. I'm assuming one of you bar brought the dead body? Yeah. Uh, it would, we would have had it. Okay. Just making sure. And everything that was was with it. So. But yeah, I'm I, I'm like kind of like very very much yeah <laughs> to her panic. <laughs> with that in mind, then then states. Uh, uh, okay. Um. I'm afraid she'd try to kill me if I didn't tell her. Y yeah, she probably would. Uh, she always tells me I get, um, emotional. Uh, get my emotions to make my own thoughts and jump into things. Uh, so... If you wouldn't mind telling her. <laughs> he just starts laughing. It's like, okay, love you, but I might be dead in a little while. Uh, um, I mean, maybe. <laughs> you can tell them maybe is exact. She does not know if you'll die. She, You might get hurt. Well, she's got to she's got to take care of Zode right now, uh, and I'm gonna uh, yeah. Like this is a problem for a later that you're hatching out. This is out a problem now. not later. This is a problem for in the morning before we go to the king. Later in a few hours. Yeah, uh, Key's just gonna grab her by the hand and say, "We'll deal with that in the morning," and drag her to the bedroom. I think you know which one's yours, and I think you also have control of Zen. Oh yeah. And uh, door's locked. I'm out for the night. Okay. Alright, so we need to get Zold resting. Uh, that seems more than fair. Um, and then we it need seems to try that... and figure out what we can do for you. Look, um, this has happened before. It normally doesn't happen. But it has happened before, and I've dealt with it. It doesn't seem like we can use that room. For some reason, Zen and Q uh, decided to talk within it. Perhaps to strategize on the next movements. I'm not entirely sure. Regardless of that, we could probably take any other room, except for the torture room we never cleaned up. Okay. Like, If you want to discuss things, we can... But my husband would have to be there as well. I have no problem with that. We need to get him resting for sure. By the way, Zold, how are you holding up? You know, light is kind of light. Say that again. I said the light. It's really loud. I think he needs to sleep. Like fluorescent lights in a mall where they just buzz and in a changing room, but super bright, so it's super annoying. That's the sensation that Zold's body feels currently all the time right now. So I will let you choose your room and we'll take Zold there. If I had to guess, the highest room would be the best room and likely the one the matriarch or patriarch uses. I don't know why Q decided to use a likely server room or secondary bedroom, but I suppose she has her reasons. And she begins to honestly, move Zold to the north. Honestly, I, I didn't know you didn't tell me there was a second floor or something. Like to be uh, honest, the highest you... room by like north, south, east, west. Oh. Now, Q probably feels a lot safer in the basement, to be honest. But that's no bedroom. Yeah. Um, while you're wandering the hallways, Morthos, you can tell that the area itself... Zold, you're... <laughs> you're tired. It hurts. Your body hurts. I'm going to say you're too distracted to say anything. So, Morthos, you're basically the only one that sees this. 
you can tell that this place has been combed over not that long ago. Maybe an hour or two ago, but not that long ago. Um, like when you were in the castle, someone combed over through the area to likely investigate or identify any of the crimes you technically committed here. You're not sure if they gathered most of the information, but no one is stationed outside when you look through a window. All right, you don't have windows. No one is stationed outside when you open the door. We technically there is a window. Yeah, there's a window at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Remember All right, the wall got blown apart. Bookshelf. It's covered up by a bookshelf, but there's a window. Okay. Uh, basically, place was combed over, but no one's stationed near here. Uh, likely means they didn't find enough information or proof, or they found enough that no one actually had to be here to safeguard it. That being said, though, the person that likely ordered it is now dead. So there's likely not going to be any um, repercussions Repair. to the point of an investigation and high penalty. Q might need to pay court fines and the stuff like that, but she has enough money to do that, technically. I mean, you could say that, but then Q um, could specify that the reason why this happens because he was a traitor trying to kill the prince. Yeah, like but legal stance wise, him. you don't really have an issue. Uh, it's just something that Martha notices. Mm. Um, well, I'm gonna kind of just keep an eye out. I still have my ghostly gaze if I need to use it. Okay. So I don't need windows. For Ray, I'm going to say she goes to the bookshelf. Like normal. Like normal. And sits down um, on this couch. Charles, if His... you want. Go ahead. There's some spare rooms here. I'm sure Q wouldn't mind you resting here for the night. It's at this point Q kind of walks out for... Not She's not in her armor. She's in like uh, casual clothes. Oh my god. I'm tired. Yeah, there's still a situation we need to look into before we can actually sleep. Yeah, that's the reason why I came back out. But I was just telling Charles, I'm sure there's a room he could crash in for the night. Uh, mm -hmm. I do appreciate it. But I'd rather make sure that this thing remains dead. I'm assuming with what Zol did, it won't ever come back. I honestly don't know what he did. So, just to be on the safe side, I'd rather keep watch, if you don't mind. He, he pref do we, do we knew he had the wish spell, right? Morthos knew he no, had the wish no. spell. No one else knew. Oh, Morthos, oh, so we didn't know. No. But Morthos, Cerulean, and Zold know he had a wish spell. You don't know the why more, uh, Zold said those words and something worked, but uh, it worked. You didn't ask questions. Morthos keeps secrets, so he didn't say a thing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> okay. He also knows um, that Zold and Cerulean do it a lot, but why would he tell anyone that? Yeah. Um, why don't we store this in the quote-unquote torture room? Charles and... looks at you with a raised eyebrow, but says nothing. We're not gonna keep it that way. It's gonna change. Go back to a normal yeah, room. I don't ask. It's been a weird situation here since day one. I'll take your word for it. To be perfectly so, honest, I wouldn't be surprised by um, nobility and torture rooms. Gonna kind of look over at Q at this you, point. <laughs> you know the guy we uh, we went and killed? Or stopped? Uh, the, the prince? Robotics. No, oh. robotics. No, robotics we don't boy. really know him. No, no, I mean, you know, like, I'm, I was saying him uh we were had we had the room for him because he had poisoned the king and we were trying to get information 
and stuff happened. It wasn't really him. He puts him in the chair, uh, ties him up still. Dead body. Uh, the head's technically still off the body, but he just puts it on its lap. Uh, doors open. He just lays like one cowboy the head's would. off the body. You cut, it, you cut it off and then stabbed into it. Or someone did. Oh, yeah, right. When I used my smite, I blew his chest apart. Yeah. Oh, that ruins my plan. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, anyways. Uh, Charles, like a cowboy that he would, uh, leans back on the wall, one foot up. Technically not smoking, since it's not his home. And he is a celestial and will not spoken to someone else's house unless given orders or allowed to. And just looks in and keeps watch. Uh, after a while, you can tell that he's drowsing off, so if you're going to do something against him, who knows, maybe he's another enemy in disguise. He's probably not. Now's the time to do it. God damn it, Dogma. No. We're not going to kill a friend that just basically helped us with a, a completer Plan. Since it's another lich, since it's worked before, I'm gonna try it again. I'm just gonna kind of let not go any closer because I have 120 range on it. Yeah, my double sight has let me see other odd things before, so I'm just gonna kind of focus on that part of my sight mm -hmm. and see if there's anything odd with him. <laughs> More of those, I want you to go ahead and roll Constitution save. Yay! Do I have anything that changes that? Mm -mm. It's been so long since I've had to do a con save, actually. I don't think I do, but go ahead. As you look and gaze pierce through with your devil sight, trying to see what the core of his reality is. Trying to see if he has a strange quirk to him. A strange presence about him. You look into and try to pierce through the very heart and soul of this man, and immediately almost get blinded by how much celestial energy and aura he has about him. Immediately, your eyes begin to burn as if you stared at the sun for about 10 minutes. Your body feels this way as well, and you just hit the ground. Uh, you take eight points of just sheer damage, psychic, and then you blink to try to put things back together. You're blind for about like 30 seconds on the ground. Charles is worried, but like after the 30 seconds, you're back on your feet and you the blindness goes away. What you saw technically can be considered, in theory, an angel's energy core. That was psychic damage? Yes. You if you suck. have like, something to negate it, you can. I don't. Okay. I figured it would be radiant, but... Oh. Boo! <laughs> Well, technically, he's not attacking you. You're forcing your sight onto him. I wasn't forcing shit. I was just looking. Okay. You're looking at him with your I fancy was being creepy. eyes. That's not the fancy eyes. That's the regular <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yes. Whatever. Uh, once you get back up, Charles, for a second, looks at you. Uh, you all right? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. All right. Going to keep looking at him. Don't die on me. Yeah, weird stuff happens to me all the time. And you might want to see a doctor for that. <laughs> I'm probably the best medical person around. That's kind of true. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> uh, Q, what are you doing in the background? Uh, we're outside out of the gazebo in like a uh, swing like bed. Yeah. Just resting. Uh, as you go out onto a gazebo-like platform, you can tell that there's like a swing where one would sit with a partner or a friend or a companion. 
you at a time uh, had your brothers with you, and you would just play around on this kind of bench swing, if you've ever seen those. They're nice, they're comfortable, but right now, what exactly are you doing? Just resting and relaxing, just small talk, honestly. A asking, I'm just trying to see how she feels with everything that's been going on. With the body laid back, uh, comfortably on your shoulder, your right one. I don't know why I'm being specific, but I am, DM style. Uh, she ignores her head forwards, and then leans it back with an audible sigh, states, I'm really tired. Yeah. There's so much. I was supposed to just tell my family off. Maybe kill a mob boss, and then we would enjoy Cerulean's honeymoon? Yeah, I, same. The town is I, exhausting. I didn't quite expect to, uh... I basically kill my father, but... Uh, she, like, grabs onto your hand and, like, squeezes it, but doesn't say anything on that topic. Meaning because she's not sure how you feel on that topic. I mean, he was a rifle bastard, but... Uh, I mean, so is a good amount of my family. But, you know, it's tough. Or at least it should be. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, a lot of things happened. I honestly think we do less when we're working. Uh, honestly, looking back, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know how much y'all did until I joined, but before that, it wasn't really the group I was with. Really, didn't do much. I, I mean, we went on assignments from time to time trying to locate some things and close portals down. Mm -hmm. uh, but this honeymoon is like ten times that. We saved a few people, uh, met some new friends and allies. Uh, <laughs> hired a lot of them, actually. You probably <laughs> met some of them when we went back. No. Yes? I'm not exactly sure if you met a lot of them. But I'm sure when we get back into town, you will. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if. Uh, but then she does state. Um, so, uh, what do you th plan to do? Or rather... What do you think we should do? Uh, I mean, at some point we need to tell Cerulean. Yeah. It's not going to be an easy talk. In fact, I honestly fear for your life. I'm going to ask to see if she can give me back my old self. Um... She honestly probably won't. Unless you give her something else in return. I mean, don't get me wrong, Cerulean's great, but when she takes something from someone, she generally doesn't give it back. Yeah. Knock, 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 knock. Morthos, that current uh, area, as you knock on it to try to speak with Zen and Q. Uh, seems hollow. Nothing bounces off of the walls better than an empty room. Wow, that was terrible English. Nothing bounces <laughs> off the walls better than sound in an empty room. Uh, so when you knock and no one responds, uh, you can tell that no one's there. Uh, if you open the door, it's entirely up to you, but if you decide to open it, uh, you find no one inside. The bed's messy, but... That's about it. Just close the door slowly. 
thankfully enough, no one was inside. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, then uh, back outside the states. Uh, so yeah, if you want to ask her for something, you're gonna have to give her something. Now she'll easily take things away from you. That's not an issue. Um, whether it be a contract with someone, uh, your own life's blood and energy, your skills and attributes, she's fine with taking those away. It's just giving them back is an issue. I can't go into details because, it, well, it's her own thing. But uh, just be prepared to give. What do you think? What, what would you suggest? Honestly, it's hard to tell. I... She doesn't seem to, like, want money. Uh, She doesn't seem to want more companions other than the ones she selects. Uh, Honestly, I would look into things she doesn't have that aren't monetary. But yeah, um, good luck with that talk. As Morthos comes around <laughs> the rooms, found no one inside except for a dead body with a head on its uh, lap. But you know, you killed that. You guys killed that dead body, so it's fine. It's not a new one. <laughs> In the meantime, Cerulean and Zold. Zold, what are you doing except for laying on the bed and not moving? Um, advanced laying on the bed, not moving. Okay. Just, just kind of trying to uh, relax, uh, calm down after the uh, big ordeal and tribulations we just went through. Just sort of there with Cerulean, trying to uh, enjoy the the moment that we have. Enjoying the moment that you have, after some time, uh, Morthos comes knocking, uh, Cerulean a- answers, uh, then Zold, not Zold, uh, Morthos looks around, uh, nods to himself and comes back out, and then you hear more footsteps combing the house. Uh, not really concerned with that, uh, Cerulean afterwards then states, uh, so you use the wish spell, I assume? I did. All right. Um, well, there's nothing I can do about that now. But it is something that you had to decide on and what you decided to govern against. Normally, the wish spell is something very dangerous to use and not at all controllable. So whatever you decided to use it on will bind to you in a way that is unique. Do you remember when you see my back uh, and you see the bird of paradise? Okay, yeah. You do see some pink uh, cheeks for a second. Do you specifically see that? Anyone else that would actually see the visible point in time would not it's really hard to read Cerulean, but you're one of the few that can. I digress. Uh, after the blush and the compliment, she coughs and then states, <clears throat> Well, um, you'll now have a mark similar to that. It'll be unique to the wish you've made, and it'll be different. In a sense, it'll meld with your body and act accordingly. You've changed the world you've altered something about it and in that regard your body will then be altered in turn in essence your very being has become corrupted it's not exactly a bad thing but it can change things rapidly or alter things strangely 
in what ways? Well, um, can you tell me what you wished for specifically? The words you used and the things you've said. Um, of course. It's fresh. Oh, you'll be um, remiss if I leave out the first two words. It's all right. Uh, sorry, it's just uh, thinking about it right now. It just, my whole world went white and hot. Yeah. I remember that feeling. She then basically rubs her back. I said the, the first two words. Followed by... For this being's death, hold true across all planes and time from this point on. All right. Do you mind if I lift your... lift you to see the image behind? Yeah, just only some help rolling. She nods, uh, lifts you up uh, like a nurse, then removes uh, the black... not black, uh, back cloak uh, to reveal the mark. Can you describe for me the mark that you had described beforehand? Um, it looks like a very large, wilted tree. Um, the branches outstretched and sloping, uh, with deep cracks in the bark, forming a knot in the wood that looks like a skull. All right. With those descriptors in mind and the wish you made, Morthos, I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> I wasn't going any further. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cerulean then states, All right. um, Well, first off, you are now marked with death. That doesn't mean you're going to die. It just means that you have attributes of death upon you. The very making that you now stand will allow things to be dead in the long sense. There is no bringing it back. If you kill something, it will remain dead for the rest of its afterlife. In essence, you yourself have become an agent of death. The very being that you are, any being that you end their life, will hit the ground and stay down, regardless of what they are. In turn, you will likely be experiencing new powers. The ones that you have wished for marks death, so they'll likely be necrotic in nature. Uh, Zold, you now add a plus 1d4 to any damage pool you have. It is necrotic damage. Uh, is, is that uh, normal? It is different. Keep in mind, whatever corruption you've presented yourself with is altered. It doesn't mean you'll always have it, and it doesn't mean it'll always activate against someone. But if you have the intent to kill, the intent to maim, the intent to hurt, that is when it'll proc. So if you decide to, I suppose, how Zen would put it, Give someone a hug, it won't kill them. It'll just mean that when you are hunting, when you're on a mission, and when you have your sights trained on someone, your body reacts in turn and makes sure whatever it is you're hunting stays down. But there is also a price to that as well. Depending on what you do and how you do it, you can alter what you are to allow... Uh, and then, Morthos, you knock, 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 knock. Hello? I'm shirtless, but you can come in. Yeah, whatever. Can just open the door and walk in. Nothing you haven't heard before. Uh, it kind of looks like a nursing scene, honestly. Uh, but... Cerulean refurls down the cloak and the shirt and just slowly lays Zold back down on the bed. Uh, Q, you technically saw 
Zold's abs. I feel like Zold would have abs. Zold would definitely have abs. Zold's cut. He's not like strong man strong, but he's definitely like the lean type. Mm -hmm. Okay, cute. Solid ass. What? What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a comparison. <laughs> the uh, bull dyke against the straight man. Who's got the better abs? Yeah, regardless of that. Uh, <laughs> Zold's back on the bed, fully shirted, fully cloaked, gun to his side, broken gun on coffee stand. Uh, Cerulean then looks towards you, Morthos. Uh, you can tell that you disturb something, but not, not something completely incapable of being returned back it's just something some conversation was cut short uh so when you entered inside cerulean then states all right um i suppose i can explain this part since it does refer to myself uh Zold, you know she's talking about what she was about to describe to you but then basically puts it upon herself uh more so as you assume cerulean's about to talk about what's currently happening with her Probably. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, she then states, What currently happened to me, what may happen to those that are similar to my nature, is considered a buyback cost. In order to change something about what I can do, what um, I can alter, depending on how different I alter it or how unique it is, it puts a strain on my life. It kind of, in a sense, forcibly drains my energy, removes the health that I have in order for an alteration to occur. The draining is permanent, and honestly, I did not expect people to actually be able to help. Now, the help hurt, but honestly, it did help. And that's why I wanted to get Zen. Q might be able to help on this end, but if we can focus enough of that energy, perhaps we can get rid of some of that negative whatever the buyback cost for all intents and purposes i'm also going to say that ray's here give me give me a second i'm gonna try something uh and i'm gonna say in my head to mask and basically use uh divine intervention and ask for mask to uh or not mask him to uh, fix both what's ailing Cerulean and Zold, put bring them back to perfect health. All right, um, you kind of got a freebie on this one because the angel that basically <laughs> dismissed you and it was kind of panicking uh, allowed you a freebie, so he just directly put you in connection with his boss. So you don't have to roll for this one. You immediately connect with the god. And with that connection, you then hear, I'm afraid I can't do anything for them. They themselves have altered themselves. If I were to change something now, their own alteration would be negated. Anything that I would do, it would forcibly change what they are. In essence, I would be changing the very fabric of what they are and negating what they have done. And if the energy that they quite literally consumed within themselves is to be exact, they did something to the extent that is more to the point necessary or what they believed is necessary. And if that is changed, that might not be a good thing for them. So you can't, per se, heal them? Is that what you're saying? 
Not without their consent, and if it's not given, I will not, as it will ultimately change the very reality of what they are now. So, uh, does that mean that the, uh, effect of my plea is, fails? I can do something for them. I can heal some, but I cannot change from what they are now without their own words. I'm just, I'm saying probably just like, I mean, Zold looks exhausted. I know he's having trouble standing up, but... I can give your kingdom. Um, where are you now? I'm in, uh, my house. <laughs> my estate. Luckily enough, they're omnipresent, so they know exactly uh, what that means. Uh, when you state Charles that... Charles is here. Oh, he is. Hmm. Yeah, he needed a place to stay, so I offered him to be able to stay here. That's more than fair, I suppose. Um, keep an eye on Charles. He's fine. He's good. But he is reckless. He'll do his job and make sure that people survive. But will not think of the greater good. No. It's not necessarily correct. He'll do what he believes is right. And that generally may not be what you believe is good. So if your two paths converge, try to meet eye to eye as best you can. Understandable. But regardless of that, if you are within your own home where you grew up, that means, yes, the king is there. So is his second and third son. Yeah the, yeah, the first son's dead. Yes, I don't feel his presence here or on the battlefield. Well, um, I'm assuming his second heir is in charge then. The third. Hmm. How very rare. The, th the second son, uh, from what I understand, doesn't want to be in charge, just wants to study at the school. I suppose academics are appropriate, but regardless of that, I will provide your kingly ship items to help out in this matter. Now, they will have to request them from them, but it is something that can help mitigate the situation. I'm afraid I can do nothing for the woman, however. Okay. Do keep care, and do keep well. And they signal out. Uh, Q, you, uh... You alright? You... Kind of felt yeah. silent. <laughs> For like a I minute and a half. <laughs> I was talking to him. Let's see. Uh... I can imagine I'll... he's not exactly too pleased with me at the moment. He more or less respects your decision. Are they more or less respect your decision? Um, so there's not really too much controversy from them. Uh, they did grant, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain to them what he, uh, Ham told me and everything, so. Right, uh, well, uh, with that in mind, everyone else learns that Helmet themselves, uh, looks at Cerulean and Zed and tells Q that they cannot change what they had decide, decided to become, mainly because if they do so, it'll negate what they did, meaning, Whatever Cerulean did will be negated. Uh, in Zold's case, you know, um, made sure that thing died permanently, which means that thing will be back. 
which might be a problem. You honestly don't know, but that thing was scary. Regardless of that, though, they needed consent. They needed approval. Otherwise, they would be altering the very fabric of reality in order to change these two people into what they were. Which might not be a good thing. Uh, but they did allow items to be given to the king, current ruler, whatever you want to call him, third son, third rock from the sun. Uh, items. What? Whatever. Uh, anyways, items to help mitigate this. However, none of the items would help Cerulean. You don't know why, and you didn't ask. Oh, thank you, Morphos. Might I ask a favor? Dependent. I need you to uh, look at me. Uh, really look at me. Worry that this ordeal has changed my soul. Something that I. cut out no it's just it stops oh, okay um, I never set out to be a myth or some ancient hero I just wanted to do the right thing I wish to help others but I need to know first off who said you're Never mind, I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> um, need to know, like, like, is something wrong with you? We know something's wrong with you. Ham just said you were changed. Right, but can I was hoping you could tell me how. Can I ask one question? Of course. You used the thing that Cerulean gave you. I did. What did Cerulean give him? A thing. A wedding gift. I. Some convictions are so strong, the world must bend to accommodate. Um. Uh, I'm gonna inside that because I, I see if Q will understand what he's talking about. Go for it. You can tell that Zold means what he just said. In order to change something, in order to melt something and make sure things go well, or things, actions are concrete, he made sure that solidified. What that means is he likely used high level magic. You're not exactly sure what he used, but it was so strong that it concussed his body into this current state. Something akin to the level of my divine intervention. Something similar, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. You're not entirely sure on the scope. But okay. divine intervention would probably be a good uh, point of reference. Okay. Um, add a character real quick. So am I... Getting a call? Yes, you are. No, uh, alarm. Ah. Am I getting, uh, the, uh, divine invention I got? Was it a free one? Does it count against my, do, like, did it succeed so that I, now I have to wait seven days? Um, again? your freebie allowed you to have it. If you decide to do it again, you can do it again this time. It just won't, you just will never get a freebie ever again. Got it. Okay. That's what I was one now. Yeah. Uh, but technically, it did work. It's just you don't have to wait seven days in this case because uh, <laughs> the angel panicked and gave gave you it. Right. Alright. So, I guess while Q's trying to figure out stuff in her own head, mm -hmm. I'm going to focus with my double sight on Zold. All right, huh? I'm trying to think of what I would use to even decide. If, 
it helps. Uh, you should probably see this as well. Ah, uh, oh yes, just murder me. Uh, <laughs> just show your back, and Q just smashes you. And yeah, I'll, I'll ask Cerulean to help roll me over again. Yep, you've outlived your usefulness. You're Rolling over. <laughs> removing cloak, <laughs> removing shirt. Uh, Morthos, you see his abs again. Pretty lean. Kind of like a swimmer's body, I'm assuming. Doesn't matter. Uh, just giving reference. Uh, on his back, you do see the emblem that was marked and described before. Uh, when you're using your devil sight, do you like hone in on that emblem or the entire frame of his body? Um, I'm going to do the entire frame of, of his body first and then hone in on the emblem itself okay. after. With the first scope of devil sight and trying to pierce through the veil of reality into the soul of the man, you begin to delve and look at him. You see strange lines being drawn out through his body, but the lines themselves are almost... Uh, how should I describe this? Piercing darkness with a purple hue tone. <laughs> what is a man? Sorry. <laughs> but I like saying it out loud. Uh, <laughs> the line structure on his body does suggest that it's coming from a main source. That source might likely be the tree emblem. But right now you just see lines. Finn, not many of them, going through his body. And they're just scattering pretty much everywhere. Yeah. They're not focused to one certain spot. Currently, they're not focusing to one certain spot. Maybe because the change just happened immediately and it'll take time. But right now, there's like no focus on the brain, the heart, the lung, the liver, the spleen. Um, the ab I was about to say Abladuda and Avogada, but I'm pretty sure I just butchered that. <laughs> yes, you did. But it doesn't seem I these lines... That. <laughs> uh, seem to focus anywhere, at least not right now. All right, and after that, I'll focus into this mark. All right, um, roll me an intelligence save. It this isn't gonna cause you damage, this is just trying to get your mind to go through this. These aren't my good saving throws. <laughs> uh, well, piercing to the veil of the tree, you begin to try to extract what exactly is going on. You can tell that the lines are forming from this tree as if they're branches going through the body. However, as you dive deeper into the tree's framework itself, the tattoo or whatever this thing truly is, it begins to draw out nature and the way Cerulean, uh's energy was before when Peep basically drew it out uh, in order to heal her, you feel that same force structure within the tree's main uh, trunk. You're not exactly sure what that means, but right, and there's even more stuff overlapping that and entangled within, but you do know that something systematically has been altered by Zold. Something has been completely changed from his body. And from what you can tell, you're not exactly sure what will happen. The more time goes on and the more this is used, the more change will happen. All right. All right. Can I kind of step back and just lean against the wall, rub my eyes. Oh, uh, huh. Morthos, I want you to go ahead. No, what's your passive perception? 14. When you get back up, uh, stop looking at Zold. For a quick second, you saw Cerulean. Uh, then you turned your eyes away. You're not sure why, but if you want to, while your eyes are still like this, you technically can see what Cerulean's got. I'll look for a moment. Try and be kind of sneaky about it. Uh, roll sleight of hand. 
because technically I'm not using my special eyes. My eyes are special, special just eyes. normal. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, like a teenager discovering puberty for the first time, um, frame of reference, it doesn't matter who uh, you like. You like who you like. Love is love. Who cares? I don't care. Uh, just don't date a toaster. They burn. You look at the don't woman in toast. front of you. <laughs> uh, as you look up from Zold and <laughs> like an awkward teenager going through puberty, you just stare at her a little awkwardly, a lot more than you would think is appropriate. And then you remember it's not appropriate, so you turn away. Um, but in that moment in time, like Zold's smaller vine-like structures going through his body, you get the same look through Cerulean in that brief instance, but there is a lot more to the point that it almost looks like her nervous system. And then you look away, not getting too deep or too noticed. Um, but Cerulean then looks at you and simply states, um, are you all right? Yeah, something, my eyes are bothering me. Also, if you have the ability to see certain things, don't look at Charles. That hurts. Um, okay. Well, isn't he a celestial? Yeah, but, uh, magic eyes thing, you know, I can see, I saw something on him and it just like, it hurts the eyes. I suppose that would make sense if you see through, well, if you can see through what Zold's being changed by, you'll likely encounter something similar to him. And if it's very potent, your body would likely be thrown back if it's not accustomed to it. Yeah. Um, Q, have you thought of anything? Because I found out something. Is there anything that I could have done? Like, I don't know any, like, spells that I could do at the moment that would... Like, if you want, I can look through your character sheet and tell, uh, tell you. But what exactly would you think your character would do? Uh, kind Divine of strike him. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of probably detect good and evil. Yeah? Okay. And, uh, uh, do you have the spell for it? Slot? It's not on my spell list. I believe that's the uh, cleric ability. Uh, no, or no. Sense good and evil or something like that, right? Hmm. <clears throat> right, now this is a spell. No, this roll, please. I had a request in my chat. Ah, the drink a potion? Yeah. Did you? No, I'm just rolling the dice for it. <laughs> there. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, Q, do you have the spell? Not on my spell list, but I have. I can ritually cast it. Okay. Um, after Morthos basically extensively looks at him, you ritually cast the spell. Um, ba -ba -ba, detect good and evil. That's the one where you detect Fey undead and demonic. Demonic. Right? Uh, Fey celestial de and uh, demonic. The uh, fiend. Like beforehand, you detect Morthos with fiend and celestial energy. Uh, Zen, you don't need to detect anything. With Ray, you don't need to detect anything. Uh, with Zold, this time, you detect a strange, almost demonic fey energy. It's strange, but you can tell that there's something intertwined with his own nature. You're not sure why fey is involved. Uh, not demonic, undead energy. You're not sure why fey is involved. But the undead energy 
might relate to what he did to keep that undead down. Uh, the energy itself seems to be in his core where the heart of the tree is, but it extends out through his body. It doesn't seem to be foreign, but it doesn't seem to have been there before. So the change quite literally changed him. In the heart of his core, you can tell that the vine-like structures of this undead fey energy stems from one point and goes throughout his body, but the branches are currently small. Why fey energy? You're not entirely sure? Uh, but that's a thing. So he's, to me, when I ping, when I, like, I ping it, he's giving off that he's Part undead, part fey, part living creature? Part normal creature, part undead, part fey. There is an energy in him that's undead and fey. Not technically a part of him, but also not technically not a part of him. Which is the annoying part of uh, DM speak of saying, it is now him, but it is not normal, and it wasn't there before. You, my friend. Mm. Um, you. Within 30 feet. Uh, oh, shoot. That means... Okay. Uh, not, done, not done describing. Q. In the area, you then feel a secondary presence. Uh... You look around trying to feel that secondary presence of energy, and then you look at Cerulean, much like how Morthos was staring at her. Uh, you feel something about her uh, altered this night. Uh, do you stare at her for a brief moment, or do you just keep your focus on Zolt? No, I look at her, too. Uh, are, are you making I'm a gonna hide it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not hiding it. Uh, I've already made this reference before, but like a teenager going through puberty and not knowing what subtlety is, you stare at this person intently and don't lose focus or blink. Have you, has Q ever given you the idea of her being subtle? No. So okay, it's fair. Then. <laughs> Looking at Cerulean, you can tell that something was off about her. Um, beforehand, you just sensed a uh, humanoid entity whatever she is you don't know don't care she wasn't undead before she wasn't fiend before she wasn't elemental celestial arboration etc etc now for some reason tonight you get everything looking about her you get the same vine sensation of zold but sporadically some of them are celestial some of them are aberration some of them are elemental some are fey fiend undead Whatever she did, it is even worse than Zolt. And at a harder and at a hard stance, far more developed. Hmm. Right then. So, what did you discover? Well, Zold, my friend. You're partly fey, you're partly human, you're partly undead. I don't know how Tatiana will take that. I suppose so. Let's just, uh, Cerulean then states, we could probably ask, or that it'll take some time to form the circle. I get a feeling that, um, me and her are about to not be in speaking terms. Probably not. That is potentially possible, yes. So, I don't know if I explain this fully um, because of my pact. Uh, I'm able to see things others can't. As in turn with Wick, I was able to see that his, he was created from 
a celestial being. He still has a celestial soul. Hmm. I may have hidden this, and, you know, I kind of hide a lot of stuff. Anyway, moving on. Um, Zold, whatever you did, the thing that you did, deals with that mark on your back. It's spreading from there throughout your body. It hasn't spread to your major organs. From what I've seen, it looks like it's going to keep spreading the more you do that certain action. To put it bluntly, it, it's like uh, the roots of the tree of that mark are just burrowing into your body. Yeah, that's where the, uh, I got the sense of, uh, the three different beings, like, not beings, but self. Being undead, being fey, and being human. Then it spread out through the roots. Cerulean then states, I can tell you that the alteration doesn't go away. The more you focus in on it and the more you use it for your own advantage, the more you'll feel it on your body. There is no coming back from this unless you change the action that you had taken. And that, like, Helm said that he could do it, but with only with your permission. With that, Cerulean does state, I am but not changing what I have done. I was about to say, but you probably don't want to. It's probably for the best. My ailment is a small price to pay. I'm sure it's If you need me to, I'll keep an eye on it. I wouldn't trouble yourself too much with it. Eh, what else am I going to do? I'm destined to die, aren't I? Uh, with that, Cerulean then states, Destiny and gods can be altered and changed, can be dead or alive so long as we choose it. We'll kill your destiny and worry about the problems later. Yeah, I'm going to kind of pull Zen behind me. Well, um, looks like you're going to need some rest. I didn't turn it down, but there is one announcement. Uh, due to a um, number of reasons, uh, do not refer to me as Zold. Zold is dead. Proper. Dead. Killed completely. Okay. Uh, you need to refer to me. So. Is car. Can you write that down? Of course. Uh, you can also just change that name tag. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't bear explaining right now, but um, it's important, and I hope you understand. Yeah. Did you say Isakar? Iskar. It's, um, Iskar. It's short. It's shortened of the full name that I plan to use. Iscariot. But uh, Iskar is fine enough. Let me get you a mask. To what end? Hmm? So really says to what end? Like oh, why? Um, I was just thinking, like, I mean... Y 
you, sir, have basically blown my the picture of a normal person. I mean, there's wizards. I get that. There's magic. I'm understanding some celestial magic here recently. But you... I've never met a person that has, wouldn't say be fearless, but approach the situations that we have the way you do. And for one, I just think he'd look badass with us. The, with the mask and the way that he uh, handles situations. Zen nods and agrees in the background. Uh, technically, I am under your employ, so if you were to commission such a thing, I... Um, be poor yes. form for me to refuse a gift. Um, I'm going <laughs> to commission... Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, tomorrow after the king, I'm going to go have one commission for you before we leave the capital. Alright, well, I think <coughs> he'll need his rest then for this meeting with the king. Yes. Yeah, that's probably true. Yes, I do suggest everyone go and rest themselves. Cerulean then states, it does seem, other than Zold's wariness, we could likely use the rest beforehand, as I don't know about you, but I, for one, am out of spells. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of slowly uh, behind my back because I I kind of mo uh, maneuvered uh, Zen behind me to go to leave. I'm gonna kind of like motion for her to kind of like start walking away, and uh, I'm gonna go. Um, oh, hey, Cerulean. By the way, Zen wanted me to tell you because she didn't think she'd have the courage to uh as i'm slowly backing out of the room uh we got married have a good night oh i'm going to have to kill her <laughs> do i hear that no what <laughs> sleep on. well let's not kill anyone just yet I suppose a trial could be in order, and then, based off of that, she ponders. I have had enough death. I'm gonna look down the hallway to make sure, you know, this door is closed. The door is closed. And just look back. So, you, Cerulean, you know exactly what's going on with Sold. I do. How long has yours been going on? Roughly around the age of 10. Yours is very... much more progressed than his. I've had to use it a lot in order for me to remain alive. And there's my real question. Is it killing you? It will eventually corrupt my body to the point of being a different person. It will stagnate the very emotions I have. It will alter the very presence of nature and the magic I can use. In essence, I am being changed. So in theory, I am also being killed. But in theory, what are you changing into? I have yet to figure that out myself. So you both know, I will be keeping an eye out if I notice drastic changes we may need to look into intervening on these situations. I will tell you now, as much as Q laments, I will not change the action I have taken in the past. I have had to change things in order for people to move forwards. And like you said to me, 
we can kill fate. Good night. I also mentioned we can kill gods. Nope, not going to that room. Don't want to be across from that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will just go and do my usual thing. I will hang out outside. That's fine. Uh, you hang out outside and make a small tent. You do actually have camping gear. So you can. Uh, you can find the gazebo. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and then just set up shop there. Yeah, he probably know what's going on. In my be around either of those rooms. First off, Cerulean wants to kill Q. I'm not getting in her way. I mean, Zold calmed her down, and maybe a trial is going to be in order before execution. <laughs> it's nice knowing you, Q. But after a long rest, unless someone wants to have one final discussion, which is probably fine. There is one thing. All right. While I am so sick and so unable to protect myself, surely you do no harm to me, right, dear? You cut out it for the second there. Uh, uh, surely would not to uh, hold anything I said against you in this state. I am, after all, weak and crippled man. Hmm. She presses her hand on your chest. Like, not to hurt you, not to kill you. Uh, she doesn't grab a pillow and, like, suffocate you. Uh, no. Uh, Go to a sleep. She puts her hand on your chest where your heart would be. Uh, moves your head uh, for a kiss. Kisses you. Uh, but does not remove her hand where your heart would be. She then states, What you are now, you have decided on what you are. I am not going to change that, nor would I wish it. You would not be the man I have married if that were not true. And if this does not hold true to you. That being said, what you have decided to use against me, what you have decided to use for your own good, those are your actions and the actions you take in life. I do not hold that against you as one must try to survive as best as possible. Your heartbeat is all I care about. Well, one of the few things I care about, and I do not care for many. So as long as that still remains, I am willing to overlook a few things. What was your wish? In the past, I had mentioned beforehand about my family, about my brother and sister, and how they had to be crossed and scattered and in going into hiding. As my family was able to draw out magic from the world itself. Well, there are two points of why that's possible. One, for some time, my siblings and I and any children born to our family would be pale, sickly, and would not survive past the age of five. In order to combat this, we form packs with dying beings, beings of greater nature, stronger attributes, and the like, in order for them to survive once more, in for order for us to survive in turn. This also grants us our wish capabilities, as they would have connections stronger than ours. My child rearing wasn't a good one, but at the age of five, I died and was brought back thanks to a celestial being. Not celestial, thanks to a greater being that I believe resonates from the Fey Wild, based on the abilities I have. Over time, however, my family died out due to insurrections, assassinations, and the like. My siblings 
were sent out into exile to make sure that they survived. However, as the youngest, my family tried to protect me, and in turn died protecting me. I then made a choice. The beings that tried to attack me, whether they are good, bad, strong, whether they resonate from another world, whether they try to connect to me through different means, either to try to get their god to corrupt me, to change me, to cleanse me. Much like Morthos, I was being hunted down in my own terms. So my wish, if you would like to know, she pauses to actually get your answer. Sold gives a nod and reaches over, placing his hand her heart as well. My wish. One of the strongest ones I could think of. One of the ones I can know was to connect with every god, demon, fey, elemental, undead, anything with power, anything with strength. And then, if anything tried to connect with me, they would die out immediately. So when I told, told Morthos that it's possible to kill God, that is true. Although with my own strength, I cannot. But thanks to my connections, I can draw out other strength. But in that turn, it also drains my life. I've had to use it a few times in order to survive the world that I now exist in. But if I did not, I suppose I wouldn't have met Cerulean. And I suppose I would not have met and married you. And to tell me one last thing before we drift to sleep. And that is? And your name. <laughs> I suppose you do warrant my true name. Well, I do not know the being that bonded with me. My name had been altered when that connection was formed. My name is in all its glory. It's not one fanciful. It's not one so prismatic or cheerful as Zen. The name that I was given on my second birth is Serenity. But with that in mind, do keep it to heart. I'll draw an X over her heart when this. And in turn, she <laughs> draws an X on yours. I have only That's told good. two people this secret. Now three. Let's get some sleep, Serenity. She smiles. Kind of... Do you think jokingly uh, pat you on the cheek? But from what you can tell, and quite honestly, uh, other than the physical contact of, air quote, sleep you guys get, she doesn't hug. So that's honestly one of the most emotional things you have seen her do. With a padded cheek, you can tell that she is concerned. She was worried for you, which is a lot more emotion than you have honestly verbally and physically seen from her 
So perhaps not all her emotions, all her connections with the world have died out, which is a good thing. But as far as you can tell, it's only directed towards two people, and one of them's you. Bonus. And with that, you drift off to sleep. Ray likely slept first. Zen and Q, after a while, likely go to sleep. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, before, so when I like come into the room, I'm gonna tell her that. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. Told her. Uh... Let's have fun. Good night. <laughs> She stays up for another hour, uh, but eventually gets some sleep. Uh, <laughs> Morthos uh, finds the gazebo, makes a tent, uh, has a probably a light snack before going and drifting off to sleep. After a while, after a good long rest, you heal up. Your connection to the world is back, <laughs> and without caffeine, you're bright and early into tomorrow. Well, Morthos is at the very least. Um, what can I do? Charles waves at you. You might want to cover your ears. Uh, all right. Covers his ears. Isn't it thaumaturgy? Yeah, it's thaumaturgy if you want to boom your voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I will cast thaumaturgy and make my voice boom up to three times as loud as normal. And just yell throughout the house. It's time to wake up, everyone! <laughs> Immediately, like, even if you're a hard sleeper, even if you're sound asleep, immediately you get woken up. Whether you had pleasant dreams or nightmares is unimportant as Zold falls into sleep, as Cerulean sleeps of robotic sheep, as Ray is probably reading in her sleep, probably. Uh, Q probably fighting some terrible monster, and Zen... Probably going wedding shopping in her own mind, to be perfectly Probably. honest. Immediately get jolted up by Morthos' face in their own mindscape and are woken up. Uh, Cerulean gets Zold up, basically becomes his crutch, and moves. Also, Zold, uh, in case you forgot, you also have control of Cerulean. I did forget. Okay. Uh, I guess we have a king to see. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure everyone was awake and ready to go. Still looking at this body. Um, enjoy your kingly ship. Do you mind if I burn it? Like to ash and sunder? Yeah, just do it controlled. Just con like a controlled burn. Don't burn the house down. Scatter it to the winds and all that. <sighs> Definitely can't hurt. Should have had that last night. That's right. Uh, no, you actually haven't. Which is why he's honestly been looking at it. Because you guys said you were going to investigate it. No one did. I literally can't move. So I'm not uh, blaming you. Okay, well, before you do that, we did forget to investigate it. We had other things going on. Perfectly alright. It seems like your friend can't walk, so... Fair. But I just had to make sure they were awake. That's why I had you cover your ears. That might have hurt. Okay. Um, you didn't forget <laughs> some of the stuff. You knew the blade um, had some berserk attack that not on his turn can just swing at someone and see if they hit. Uh, it basically possesses yeah. the souls of various warriors throughout time. Not throughout time, but 
various warriors that they likely killed. Um, you knew... No, Ray knew uh, the cloak was strange and had an aura presence of magic about it. Just didn't cast Identify or something of the like. Uh, so I'm assuming you take his robe before he burns it. Okay. Uh, we take so everything and just did the burn the body. Okay. Uh, you take everything, which is a fanciful magical robe, um, a long sword. No, this is a great sword. A great sword of warrior's might. Uh, he wouldn't have any health potions. I don't know why I gave him health potions. They wouldn't even work on him. Whatever. Uh, oh, right. He was meeting someone. Uh, two greater healing potions. Uh, a missive. A missive that looks important, like the one that Morthos you got that hurt your body. Those went to Q. Yeah, Q's yeah. got that. Oh, then you should have that one as well. Or Morthos tries to see if they can hold on to it. No, that went to Q. Okay. Already. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that makes sense. All right, I think Ray looked at his body and then gave it to Q because yeah. it hurt. Mm-hmm. Ray okay. gave it um, mm -hmm. to me. Uh, da, 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 da. So he had two different missives? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Um, the one, one you with got the rolled-up scroll. Uh, anyways. Da, 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 50 gold. 50 silver. 25 copper. And 3 platinum. No, not three platinum, three electrum. No, I and then I said an even number, four electrum. Okay, can you put that money in the chat at least? Sure. You got the rest. Did we get some platinum? Uh, I think so. Like, not a lot, but I think it was like 15 platinum. Which is still pretty good, honestly. Uh, but that was it. Uh, after that, Charles basically focuses in, uh, celestial magic around the body and casts a holy fire and then just burns it completely to sunder and smithereens. He, he looks upset. Uh, not at you guys, but for not asking this question earlier so he didn't have to stay up all night and see if this thing got back up. But body's now decayed and turned into ash. He picks up most of it. Uh, unfortunately, he can't pick up 100% of it. But he puts it in a jar, then comes over here. Right, settled with it. I'm going to go scatter it into the wind, sea, and air. This is probably the last time you see me, unless you decide to ask for celestial divine intervention. You can always, if you need a place to stay while in town. I, I mean, I've been using the uh, shed out in the woods. Zen then states, it's not a shed. Well, I'm using it as a shed, darling. I, I do apologize for that. But it's kind of like my workstation, I suppose. I mean, you can use it. It's technically not mine. Well, I can't really say you can use it. You know what? Use it. And then after you're done with it, burn it to the ground. Uh, any reason why? No. No reason at all. <laughs> Kind of All right, then. Like your style, kid. I'm gonna go into the woods. And with that, Charles many times. It's the castle, then? Uh, yeah. 
All right. Da, 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 da. Capital Castle. Oh, oops, you're not supposed to see those stairs. Wait, what? Did they put more there? Yes, I did. That's so, it's a lot. Don't worry about it. Officially, the DM is up to no good. His saltiness is getting worse. Uh, no. Honestly, it probably when uh, my computer was acting up. And it just saved everything there. Mm. Um, but no. You arrive at the castle without too much issue and people let you in. Uh, some people bow, others do not. But overall, you get to the king's court. It doesn't seem like there's many people here. Uh, but the... Not the two same ones that you saw before. But two sentry guards do flank the king. Not as if they're about to kill him, attack him, or do anything of the sort. But, you know, good guard, good guards are hard to find. Especially with the numbers dwindling and going straight to the war zone. So, now, you know, uh, the guards in the town are still being used to protect it. Just now, people are overlooking and making sure that they don't have a command code to kill anyone just restrain them uh his right hand guard is also there probably not that close Hello. surprisingly enough there's no procession for you there's no gravitas celebration from what you can tell and based on the th <laughs> things uh that you've experienced beforehand this is likely a hush-hush sort of thing. More than likely, uh, Zold, you've dealt with espionage work yourself, so has Cerulean. Um, Morthos, you've dealt with people lying. Uh, Q, you've dealt with politics before, so has Zen. Uh, if you had to guess, this is being kept hushed down. Uh, the true heirs demise will likely be publicized as um, him being killed in an honorable war miles away from here and that'll likely be the story that they go with rather than him abruptly coming home and then being murdered by a scientist uh, he melted into a puddle yeah uh, whether you believe Tasmir believes that or not is entirely up to you but um with Anderson, will likely be some case of unfortunate accident within his own laboratory, perhaps. But you do know that you are here to receive your gifts for saving the city, perhaps the kingdom. But no one will truly know about it. Except for the person that matters. Uh, yourselves and the current heir while the king is recuperating. Uh, I'm going to assume Q goes to the front based on, you know, past actions. Mm -hmm. So when you move forward, Tasmar nods and agrees, uh, salutes. Uh, the, not him salute. The soldier salute, his robotic soldier salute, turn and then begin to walk in opposite directions further away. It's simple precaution, so it's not anything to be concerned about. Tasmar then states, Now then, fellow warriors and keepers of the kingdom, I do thank you for your work, and I do endeavor to make sure that you have done well. As it stands now, Miss Bishop, Lady Q, as you will, uh, or Miss Q, or Q, it does seem that your home was ransacked by some vicious ne'er-do-well. We will send people from my own personal keep to clean it and to make sure that any damages 
that have occurred be repaired. Appreciative. Yes, unfortunately they made a very big mess. But I'll see how quickly I can clean that up. If you had to guess, he winks. Wearing a helmet, can't really tell. But again, if you had to guess, uh, he's basically waving off the technical murder you did in your home. Yeah. Uh, but with that, he then states, Now then, with that in mind, you have all done and served this kingdom well. And for that, I will grant you one gift. I can't exactly give wishes. Uh, so I'm afraid you'll have to be a little small on the topic. You can acquire one treasure from the king's trove. You can ask for some payment of some sort. You can request something be crafted or forged for you, and we'll see what we can do. Or you can request a title. In rank... Um, hmm. You can see him pondering, see him question, the thoughts go through his mind, and then he states, In a rank higher than what you currently possess, or of matching quality. You do hear like some of the guards gasp at this, because this is rare. For any noble to go beyond their own status is a hard thing to do. And for him to just willingly give it to randos, uh, although you did save the kingdom, is unheard of. Q, <laughs> and everyone else technically, but Q specifically, would know that he's kind of just doing this also to piss off any politicians in the area and any families. At this point, you basically save the kingdom, save his dad, killed a very bad person and killed an even worse person. He's not going to give two and, shits. And and stopped an atrocity that was about to happen. There's that too. Uh, but right now, he's not going to care what politics have to say. Just doesn't care. He's going to run things his own way. <laughs> Screw the rules, as he's, well, like, as he's technically saying. Now then. One by one, step up and request what you may. I can also provide perhaps um, a spouse, a significant other that can help you. Uh, maybe a fellow guard, magician, crafter, forger, um, healer, or the like as well. I don't mean anything by that, however, I'm sure you all do quite well in relationships. I assume. This is my wife. I love her a lot. <laughs> You're currently just kind of hugging her. So it kind of really does look that way. You probably also do. But it really looks like uh, you're very emotional. I see that. You already know my situation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's cute. Uh, I wouldn't bring that up right now. I I'm I don't care anymore. <laughs> it is what it is. Once a trial. Uh, <laughs> Zold, Morthos, you do see uh, Cerulean's eyebrow like twitch for a second, but nothing happens. Likely because she doesn't probably want to murder someone in front of a king. Uh, but regardless here's the that, real question: Does Zold squeak when Cerulean starts like squeezing him tighter? Uh, probably not. I don't feel like Zold would squeak. Up to you. Arguably, Zold uh, Iskar uh, not feeling a whole lot of anything right now. That's true. Uh, with that in mind, <laughs> no, that's very true. Your muscles are basically numb. Uh, but with that in mind, Tasmar the state. To Q, yes, I don't really give that many abilities to many people, so. That one didn't stand out. Now then, uh, Miss, uh, I'm just gonna call you Q. Do you mind? Of course That's you fine. don't. You mentioned this beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. Q, since you are the first one that stated something, you can be the first one to receive something in kind. I'm not, I'll let my friends decide theirs first. 
I need to talk with Zen about some stuff. <laughs> Think it over. I'll uh, basically drag Zen off to the side while I wait for Morthos, uh, uh, Iskar, and uh, Cerulean to do choose their sh stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, to like give a topic at hand. Kazmar technically doesn't know your actual true names. He knows how you actually look. He just doesn't know your true names. Uh, so honestly, if you just use Iskar, he'll accept that. If you use Morthos or Zorthos, he'll accept that. Ray's been using blue. Uh, so <laughs> I don't see why she would change that. But yeah, uh, who wants to ask for something first? Maybe. Maybe uh, take uh, our small break here so that we can use the bathroom. Think this over. Yeah, I was about to say if you need like a small break, uh, get a drink, go to the bathroom. Feel free to do so now. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose I could also have told them that they could think it over as a group. Just talking to fill the void of no sound. Did you know tomatoes are fruit, not a vegetable? Hello. Hello! Didn't think someone was here. No, I was switching to my phone. Now, I'm thinking about how I can enhance my weapon. Yeah, yeah. And I really don't know because it's a plus three greatsword. It has Pact of the Blade feature. I mean, technically, I do force damage with it when I use my smite. So it does have one element. Um, I suppose you can try to get something similar to Zold's items forged, uh, the elemental changing barrel. I was also going to talk to you about how can I keep the damage on it, but kind of shift its form? Though technically, I can. No, you I can do that do automatically. With your pack to the blade. Yeah, because I choose the form it takes. Yeah. You uh, had said that that's actually a feature of the sword itself. Yes, it has to be a bladed weapon, though. Well, it was gonna be a bladed weapon. Yeah. It was. It was gonna be a scythe. For some reason, I knew it was going to be a scythe. I did too. I knew he was going to do a scythe. I'm going to switch to my phone. I'm going to go have... I have to... I need to go take, have a cigarette because my head is pounding. Mm -hmm. Guess what I'm doing right now. <gasps> Smokers. No, I forgot the... Shut up. I've been streaming <laughs> for four and a half hours. Dude, I don't care. Do what? Like, my best also, friend's mom was a smoker. I grew up with smoking. I don't care. A dogma, I've been promoting you. Oh, uh, don't smoke. Never smoke. Um, smoking's bad. Don't do it, kids. You, are you live on... Did you not mute yours? Oh, oops. <laughs> it's never happened. back <laughs> what if it's on mine i don't care but no i've been promoting you on my discord on other people's discords on twitter oh that's nice of you i'm trying i'm trying to help you reach affiliate because we get you enough followers and the enough viewers you get a sub another way yeah and then it's another way to make a little extra money that's true 
I mean, I've been currently professionally DMing as well. And with my... Honest, I think... Uh, what's, like, the next step in habit? Obsession. Obsession? Oh, no. That's not the word I was going for. Let's just use obsession. Yeah. Um, you might as well, as much as you DM. Yeah, with my obsession with uh, DMing. Yeah. You... It helps but, yeah. to... Um, <laughs> What's it called? Justify how much I DM. Well, like I said, I've been promoting you on a lot of stuff, so... <laughs> yeah, that's nice of you. Don't you well, I already have my affiliate status, so... What do you think I've been I try using? to help others. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Uh, non... Music that... You can't be taken down for, because I own the right. rights to it. The uh, what? It, oh, I was just thinking about that, and I had the name, and I forget I the actual name. Yeah. Uh, DMC. Yeah. yeah. The type. No, that's different. Royalty free. Yeah, royalty. Royalty free. free. Yeah, I've looked into that, but I haven't added anything to my stream because I do mostly video games, so they have their own music. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just want to give you that heads up, so I have been promoting for you. That's cool. Trying uh, to help. I don't know, maybe I'll do that myself, actually promote myself into things I actually do. Well, you're in my Discord already, so... Sure I am. I just don't want to spam it. After... Well, no, there's a promo channel in there you can use. Fair. Honestly, use it. Because the only one that uses it is me. And I've actually, I think I put yours in there when you were doing uh, a Friday night game. Oh, yeah. I'm still working on my Discord. I need <laughs> to get my bot fixed. That's fair. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, bots are a pain. <laughs> Yeah, but this one auto posts for me the in my Discord. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The um like Muik bot or whatever it's called. M E E six. Yeah. Yeah. I got that one. Oh, so welcome back, Huntsman. Thank you. But yeah, I'm I was messaging Huntsman about how I could improve my weapon. Have you tried changing it into a gun? No, because remember... No, surprisingly, that wasn't the advice I gave. <laughs> remember, you just said it has to be a bladed weapon. Yes, I know. So technically, uh, if it's a gun with a blade on it, does that still work? A bayonet, you mean? Uh, you can try. Well, <laughs> if it shoots bladed weapons. Oof. What if it's the gun from Painkiller that shoots saw blades and lightning? What about, uh, from... Fuck, I think I just figured out what I wanted to ask for. <laughs> uh, what is it? Dead by Daylight... What's his name? Deathslinger? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gun. Uh, shoots the, a uh, blade out on a chain. Redeemer. It's called the Redeemer. I could have a lot of fun with that. Sure could. You have to uh, get down your uh, villainous. <laughs> 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 nah, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've played uh, Dead by Day. Yeah, I heard. Uh, it's, it's, from Oculus. But... You were also drunk at the time. And also, Huntsman, I have been playing Killer off and on. I was mad uh, last weekend. Almost had a 4K, and then the last person disconnected. Uh, disconnects are, disconnects in 3K plus hatch is still a 4K, honestly. <coughs> Literally, I had a fourth person. They didn't try to hide. They ran straight to the locker, so scratch marks. And I, so I knew exactly where they went. 
opened the locker and just started to grab them out and they disconnected us. You fucker. <laughs> well, uh, luckily enough, and ironically enough, uh, speaking of disconnections, I apparently disconnected a while ago. It's a good thing I'm also recording this or else I would have had a problem. Oh. Twitch has been a bitch lately, by the way, just so you know. Yeah. Um, it is like the entire thing of Twitch is crashing to where you can't talk and chat. Uh, it'll stop playing for people that are watching and all this other shit. Mm. Yeah, it's happened to me a few times, but I guess I got used to bad internet that I don't notice it from time to time. Yeah. I found out what my problem is. What was going on with mine. It's because uh, there was an issue where it's not running the, my stream elements as administrator. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't getting the right connection, apparently, somewhere in there. Ah. So now, that's why I kept dropping frames. Just dropping all my frames. Oh. Now, I run it as... Administrator, I haven't dropped a single fucking frame in how long? Almost four hours and 45 minutes. So I just have to remember to run it as administrator. Yeah, um, it'll smooth things out. Also, uh, going into performance mode will help. Although, okay. you won't be able to see how the stream actually looks on this. Excuse me. You look at the stream itself. Welcome back. All right. Well, I'll be back at my computer in just a moment. I'm getting a drink. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm try I, I, don't know, I don't know what to do for the gift. Uh, you can discuss things. Uh, I was gonna discuss with Zen, to be honest. You can also do that. So, you said, like, a raise in rank. I, my, if I remember correctly, you said my family's rank is 9. What would it go to? 10. 10, okay. Or okay. you can make it, like, specifically you 10. Do what? Like, you yourself would raise in rank. You can also do it that way. And I'm back. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm gonna pull Zen off the side and talk with her about... What does she think? That's fair. You can also discuss things as a team if you want. Like, outside of game, inside of game. <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm just trying to figure out because Morthos would not want a title or anything like that because of, you know, he's being hunted. Yeah. So he would look at some way to enhance his abilities. That's why I was bugging you, Huntsman, about how I could enhance my weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things that, like, there, like, I, I don't want to, like, overstep and, like, suggest something that would be too powerful, but I would just say look at uh, magical, other magical weapons and take inspiration from there, probably, again. Probably gonna have to be cleared by both Dogma and the King, but uh, that's a good source of inspiration at the at least. Yeah, very true. Again, I don't mean to overstep. Nah, nah, you're good. Again, it's kind of hard to ask when the question is so blank. Well, when the response is so blank, he's basically offering you guys a good thing, and now it's up to you to think about that good thing. So actually 
coming up, talking with each other, uh, seeing what you guys would want. Doesn't hurt to talk. Either inside or outside of the game. I think I think I know what to ask for and how to ask for it. Okay. Uh, uh, Q. I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, Morthos, do you need any help? Well, there is an option. I just thought of. Okay. Let you me look at my character sheet real quick. For sure. You could also say, no, I don't want your dirty DM help. Get away from me. I know your monkey paw business already. You are a monkey. That has paw. The palms? What do monkeys have? I don't know. How many times have you wished on the monkey's ball, though? Is your arm starting to turn hairy? Do you find that you stalk your girlfriend's boyfriend late at night? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Uh, I mean, it does. I mean, you might dress up in a raincoat and, like, literally disembowel him. These no. things happen. <laughs> yes, these things happen, unfortunately. But I mean, the phrase you just used, your girlfriend's boyfriend. I know what I said. I said what I meant. And that thing remembers 100%. There's, there's like zero people that are getting a reference right now. I'm very sad. I got it, but no one got my Dr. Seuss reference, so I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. What's up? Well, I've only read like three Dr. Seuss books in my life. Yeah, fair. Iskar will um, kind of shoulder off of a cerulean shaky legs. Take a few shaky, wobbly steps forward. All right. Uh, Tasmar concerned. Uh, does state, are you all right? I've not ever felt worse in my entire life. It feels like my entire body is but one large bruise that is being pressed upon by all angles. Uh, underneath his breath, but uh, you can clearly hear, because he's not kind of keeping it a secret, but he's also not like stating it to the world. I can probably guess what he's going to ask for, but let him ask it himself. All right then. So long as you're alive. I assume, um, as you came forwards, have a request. I do. Um, <coughs> we have seen things and fought things that lurk in the shadows, that dwell at reaches that we cannot comprehend. They eat at our world, and they mean to override it. I would like to ask for the vision to pull these things from the shadows they lurk into the light. Hmm. It'll take a few days to commission, but I can forge for you not me, myself, but I can have an item forged for you that'll give you sight beyond measure. A sight that will instrumentally change the very reality that you see in front of you. The very people, nature, and magic. You'll be able to pierce the veil of all. However, if this is what you desire, is this what you want? What I want is to ensure people are safe. He nods. 
thinking you were going to ask for something to enhance your body or like to get doctors to figure out what's going on with you. Um, simply nods and agrees. Within three nights, come back to this temple. Within that time, an item will be forged for you. Glasses that will give you true sight. Unless you prefer a different item be forged. Whether it be glasses or eyes themselves, I'm... Waited with bated breath. Hmm. I can deliver the second one within a night, but only if you're sure. Do you think it better? It'll be faster, but potentially about the same strength. I'll leave the decision to you. Then we will wait three days. As I'd rather not have your body wear any further. May not look it now, but the body is normally strong. Protect those things dear to me. With what I've seen of that, I have no doubt. But do take care. Leash. His old kind of takes his steps back, stumbling, but yep. uh, catches himself. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Q, you wanted to have a discussion with your wife? Mm-hmm. Alright, uh, speak. What do, you, what do you think? I don't know what to ask for. Um, honestly, this is a tough one. If, we're, if we're going to encounter things that we've encountered within the city outside when we're going back to work maybe some type of adamantine plate so if they do hit you they won't hit really hard that uh, way I kind of tap the armor that I'm already wearing that does that exact thing yeah uh, but I don't think Zen was there when she forged it which is why she said it oh um then perhaps adding something to it then to reduce a type of elemental attack against you or a physical attack against you like slashing damage or uh, bludgeoning damage. Um, if I would say... You did speak about being higher than your family, about being of stronger connections and ties, but also higher in regards that you won't need to play the political game. While your father no longer controls your own homestead, you can still do this. It'll mean that you won't be tied down. And ultimately, you can decide on what you do with your own home. Indeed. <sighs> Although... But, you can, I, I gotta think about not just myself anymore. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she was actually going to say, although, uh, I guess you considered it our home. Uh, but I digress. She then also states, if, if you yourself are worried about others, if you want to think about others in turn, whether it be our friends or 
the people we meet. Maybe something to protect them. Like, I suppose we can't just ask for something specific, but if we give a general thought to them, they might be able to give something in kind. Like, maybe if we ask them to have or be given something to heal someone whenever we see them or um, protect them with some type of shield. And they could interpret it in their own way. What are you gonna ask for? Um, I suppose I can tell you. <laughs> we are married. Um, I'm going to ask for the extermination of the people that are currently hunting me down. <laughs> okay, then. It'll kill the stone we have left unturned. True. And they're technically really bad guys <laughs> that uh, do this for a living <laughs> and don't look for other options. I mean, technically Cerulean did the exact same thing, but, you know, she changed, <laughs> found a better life. They don't change and don't want to. So I don't feel bad about this. Thinking about maybe asking for my own rank. You can. Uh, I'll fully support it. Uh, honest I might see if possible. Outside the normal nobility, above the normal nobility, but below him, uh, the noble, the royal family, of course. Um, well, as you know, there are 12 ranks within nobility, and then there's the ruling family. So I suppose you would be asking for the 12th rank. In a sense, yes. But I'm not going to word it like that. <laughs> then it might... <laughs> this might be fruitful for you after all. I'm going to do it. I'll go last. Oh, uh... But I mean, I wanted to go last, but that's fine. Uh, okay, I'll go before you, and then, then there's yours. Uh, thanks. I'd rather not, you know, in the middle of everyone asking for things. Oh, yeah. Can you kill these ask people? Ask for people's death. Right, I understand. Uh, but Q, you said, all right, you can, and then I kind of cut you off there. What? Uh, you said, all oh, right, you can, and then I accidentally cut you off. And I all right. I, I, no, I said, all right, you can go last then. Oh, okay. Uh, Morthos, have you thought of an idea? Discussing something with Huntsman. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I'm just going to say thematically, Blue I'm comes forwards. Asks for their thing. Ask for a thing, 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 thing. Probably a book, probably magic, probably some sort of paying her debts that she has a lot of. And then comes back down. We can discuss what she actually asked for next week. So, real quick, since I missed the one session, uh, it was found out that the people that were taken were turned into soul gems of some type that was my speculation it's speculation not actual word or a hearsay uh the people taken in this town 
most of them were retrieved back. A lot of them were experimented on. And one specific child that you guys were looking for uh, has been removed and taken to the bordering war. Uh. Yes, I want to see these maps, Pinterest, but... I don't want to see them while I'm looking <laughs> and playing a game. <laughs> Sorry, talking out loud. See, now I'm debating if I should be asking for his return. You can. They'll send a platoon. Uh, probably, no, not probably a platoon, but probably a five-man band uh, to sneak in, try to see if they can find him, and then Sneak him back out. Opinions. I mean, that's uh, that's kind of a you thing, honestly. Thank you for your, you know, bullshit opinion. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, it, it's that's if that's what you want. So, not a gun out of ten. I mean, I don't... Uh, did you just say Huntsman? I said not a gun out of ten. Not a gun out of ten. Well, if I don't ask for it, I'm going to request that we go do that. I think we had planned to for at some point. It's uh, also has been speculated that one of the three people in the photo that you have is there is known as... Uh, Wondertainment, and she's she currently has the child. Like, you know that that person probably has yeah, to be stopped by your own organization. Sure. Uh, so that's not a really a thing up for discussion. If you want to stop these people, that person needs to go. Unless you want completely ignore it, which you can. I am not going to railroad you into anything. Also, I keep forgetting that I am a very moving person when I speak, so I'm quite literally making all these gestures with my hands that no one sees. Mm-hmm. I kind of figured this much. <laughs> I mean, I had uh, figured we were going to go get the kid back. Yeah. At the very least, you'll be going to that destination at some point in time. Unless you decide to tell your organization and have a separate team, which they do have, uh, to see if they can deal with the problem. Please, why trust others with when you, when you can do it yourself? I'm... We go there, I'm destroying everything. Mm -hmm. I will retrieve this child. But yeah. I'm gonna have to explain this to my chat, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now, keep it a mystery. Let them wonder. Or you can explain it. It's perfectly fine. Oh, now I really gotta think on this for a moment. Okay. Uh, I would say let Cerulean go. Yeah. Uh, Cerulean walks up. Hmm. Tasmar then states, as you stood up, it seems that you are next in line. So then tell me. What is it that you request? Cerulean in all mind and likelihood, the main focus, the things that she's wondering, the looks that she has. Not the looks that she has, that makes no sense. The look that she has within her own mindscape. That even makes less sense. The look that she has in her face that you can tell seems to have a thought within it. You can't really read it, but you can tell that it is distinct. It is specific. So when she says this, it is not that rare of something to request. She then states, I need to see the treasures that you have in of your kingdom. And I would like to select something from that. Hmm. 
I suppose that's more than fair. Again, I can have something forged for you if you'd like. Your husband did ask for something forged. So perhaps you would like something in turn. No, that's all right. I need something from that specifically. Very well, then. He then uh, looks at his right-hand guard, nods, goes away for a second, comes back with a rather large chest, brings it down, and places it in front of her. Uh, afterwards, she then states, I'm going to be looking at this for a while, so if anyone wants to go, you can just step in front of me. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to drag the chest over here. And she just begins to drag it over here. Where the war table is. Uh, Tasmar then states, um, If there's something specific you're looking for, I could probably help you. No, it's fine. I know what I'm looking for. Or at least I'll know it when I find it. Q did state it would be here. And I wouldn't want to be... I wouldn't want for her to be a liar. Ah. Did I hear that? She's not keeping it qu subtle. It'll be there. Yes, I'm sure of it. If it's not there, you know whose fault it is. Don't take it up with me. She's just nothing I can do, so look. Uh, well, uh, here I, I... I'm talking to Zen at this point. Well, I guess it's my turn. Uh, yeah. Okay, ha guys, I need your help on how I should word this. Um, let's see. I like how you said, hey guys, I need a uh, way to, f I need help to word this, and then immediately say nothing. Uh, silence. Oh, I, they, I mean, Don't I thought they... trying to word. Do what? What are you trying to word? I don't understand. Oh, I thought... I didn't know if you had heard me or not. I didn't. No. Uh, so, <laughs> my bad. Uh, no, um... Trying to word how to request a rank outside the normal nobility... But above the nobility, but below the royal family. I wish for my station to be... I wish for my station to be enhanced while staying outside the normal squabbles of the houses. Um... Is car. You technically do know a way to phrase this better than the way you just phrased it. Uh, and Morthos, you also technically do as well. Um, Iskar, go ahead and roll for me history. Morthos as well, if you're helping. If you're not helping, that's perfectly fine. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, Morthos, roll with advantage. Your history is that bad, eh? It's one. Mm, it's not great. Mine is a two. Sick. See, I knew I made the right call. Perfect <laughs> every time. That's me. 22? 20. I am a fucking tactical genius. <laughs> you just break everything in this game, huh? I literally am on the hottest streak and cannot be stopped. Someone call an Eskimo, because I need to fucking chill. <laughs> okay. Um, with Iskar's help, you begin to wonder, observe, and look at your surroundings, what you've done in town, what you've seen, and Morthos. You remember that 
Iskar's mom has that ranking and title that Q is looking for. So the best way to ask for something specifically that Q specifically is looking for is saying, I would like to request the same title and honors bestowed to blank. Uh, but blank is then immediately written off and then you remember her name because, you know, natural 20. Because the DM can't remember her name right off the top of his head. No, I do. I, I just wonder if you remembered. I just know her as Zold's mom. Um, uh, Lady yeah. Blackwood. Lady Blackwood. I apologize to everyone for that. <laughs> <laughs> as Zold's mom. Who's Zold? And... Is what he's probably say. Uh, so Lady Blackwood. I okay. So how should I say it? I would like to request the same request. honors and title bestowed upon Lady Blackwood. Lady Blackwood. I would like to request the same titles and honors bestowed upon Lady Blackwood. Very well then. As an added bonus, you will remain. And house your own house here. You will have your titles and honors, and you will be outside the rankings themselves, but within the spectrum itself as well. As you have more than enough proven your worth to the kingdom, you will have what is bestowed upon few the honors of valor and kingdom. In essence, you are higher than most, if not all, nobility, other than the royal family itself. You, at times, can request jobs of such status, if you so choose, but they are ones that are quite dangerous. So I can see your companions joining you in this, if you decide to do so. We will ask for your help from time to time, but it is always your own prerogative whether you decide to answer the call or not. As the title suggests, you will be given the name or given the rank that you have deemed, and the title that you are given will be named of your own choosing. Miss Blackwood herself has given the name and title of Thorn, so you can give your own title in turn. Meaning you can title yourself. Okay, let me think on it. Yeah, no problem. Um, but what he has basically stated is you're basically under the royal family, not working for them, but quite literally underneath their own status. You technically work for the kingdom, but upon request, they cannot force you to do anything. But, you know, a job's a job, and if they actually request it, it might need to be done. If not by you, by another of the same title. Right. You can also request jobs from them if you decide to do so. Uh, this is a great way to earn money. If you already didn't have a job, and in those jobs do things, the job doesn't pay well. So this will likely pay well. When you ask them how much it pays, it pays very well. <laughs> uh, but besides that, uh, you still retain your house title. Uh, you don't retain the rank, as you are technically outside of that spectrum. But you are still the house matriarch. Patriarch? No, matriarch. I was right the first time. Uh, until you decide to bestow the title upon someone else, whether it be your own child or your sibling. Right. In essence, you got what you asked for, and a little bit more. Nice. Alright, um... I basically, I'll... Mm -hmm. Talk with Zold. I, I, I don't know... 
what to uh, make of my title. Well, you have a number of very impressive accomplishments underneath you. Um, you can always go with uh, your abilities as a title. I could suggest Sky Speaker. because I talk to Helm a lot. It really just looks like she zones out for a while. Um, I mean, of course. But it's, uh, it's mm, I assume my mother chose her name in a similar fashion. It likely has she... some sort of semblance uh, to her own past or history. His car kind of laughs, um, and then under his breath, uh, Ross touched. What was that? Oh! Uh, um. this uh, my eyes have been opened ever since I look over at Cerulean and ever since uh, Cerulean helped me fix something that was forced upon me and then allowed me to choose my own Guess you just could say path. Perhaps something along those lines. Lady Quincy Bishop of the True Path does have interesting ring to it. What do you think about uh, Lady Quincy Bishop? Uh, Truth Seer. No. Sorry to cut in, but a dogma, no. <laughs> that would be all kinds of bad. Yeah, super bad. I asked him if I could have a sphere of annihilation. <laughs> uh. If I might suggest Skybinder. <laughs> for a number of reasons. Do elaborate. A uh, Helmswoman is someone who guides a path, uh, who sets the course, uh, though you could also take it literally as being a woman of help. Oh, yeah. I 
just caught on to that. <laughs> uh, I worry. I'm far too clever for myself sometimes. <laughs> uh, with that, Zen doesn't laugh, but she does come forward and does state. Uh, based on the information that uh, Iskar has mentioned, Zen, like, feel free to give your own choice. She's just going to chime in. Um, based on what Iskar has mentioned, perhaps the name, or at least something similar to Frost Maiden. Do you have? I, your... I would stay away from that. Um... That would kind of mean I'm connected more towards you know who. I would also say that um, it sounds incredibly evil and suspicious. That's fair. She just steps back. <laughs> she just thought that sounded cool, but apparently no one else did. It's, it's cool enough, but, you know. Oh, hey, there goes Iskar, the death-touched. Uh, that's fair. Quite honestly, I just rolled a few things um, and picked some of the words that you guys mentioned. Frost Maiden was the thing that she was going to say based on my rolls. <laughs> and honestly, the things that you just mentioned, I can see it being a bad idea. I'm sure you could send a missive to the king with uh, your chosen title at a later date. Yeah. You can ask. It's alright if I get back to you on the title, right? Yes, it's perfectly alright. I've already given you the abilities of the title. You just need to fill in the blank. Alright. There is no rush in this. Um, I... You can take the three days, it, or more if you need it, uh, for the item that I will forge for your friend there. Again, not me. I will hire someone to do it. So, Sorthos, what are you going to choose? That's a good question. Still need time? Like, I'm looking at the magical items and I'm not really seeing anything outside of the belts. Okay. Um. And I don't know how I could enhance the sword because it's already a plus three weapon. Tell you what, if anyone wants to change their item, you can. Uh, we'll probably end it here. And to give allow anyone else uh, something else if you don't want to change it that's perfectly okay but uh, we'll end it with this last cutscene and that's where we'll wrap it up so as you begin to wonder Morthos Zorthos technically uh, are you disguised as a farm boy again yeah because we're in public that's fair uh, Zorthos you're wondering on what exactly it is again King can see you. Doesn't matter. He keeps your secrets. One of the few things you have along. Uh, you guys then see Cerulean state. All right, I found something. It seems that she is not a liar at the very least. Um, um, she's trying to remember your name. And then eventually she gets it. It's Car. Do you mind holding out your hand? Oh. Kind of very shakily holds the hand out, uses the other arm to, like, brace the hand. Oh. All right. She grabs something from her hand, twists it around all her fingers, and immediately it looks as if she's about to stab in your hand. Who knows? Maybe something in that chest turned her evil? Uh, but before she actually does anything towards it, she does twist it through her fingers, 
goes directly for your hands as if she's stabbing it, but then points out her pinky, not pinky, uh, index finger and thumb, and then slips something on your finger. Not on your wedding ring. Uh, you can choose where it is, but it's another ring. Uh, placed upon it, you can then see an insignia ring of a strange, uh, almost burly orc. Uh, on the actual emblem itself, it's like the face of an orc, the body of a bear, and the wings of an eagle. It looks like a chim chimera that went through the blender. But immediately you feel a... Yeah, kind of. Uh, a strange sensation in your body pulse and then render through the entirety of your framework. What you have now is technically considered a wild strength ring. However, you don't get any attributes of it due to your current body's instability. Right now, what you do have, though, is a strength of 10. I kind of look at it, twist it around. Um, is her hand still close to mine? Yes. Just take hold of her and pull her into a hug. So with that adorable moment in turn, uh, basically her giving up her potential, air quotes, wish for someone she cares about and an embrace in turn, one thing is definitely certain. Well, people are still wondering what to ask for. When the embrace happens, Q can easily be visibly seen by Cerulean. And what she has in mind behind those blue eyes, we'll just have to find out and see next time as we end the session for today.